All right, so here is the completed converted drum. Take off all the lugs to see what's inside of there. And we have the rim comes off. Here's the do-it-yourself drum head, which was made with Pfeiffer Solar Text mesh, wrapped around a regular drum hoop, super glued on to hold in place, and then stitched after the material was folded in, that was stitched together to the top side and you may be able to see some stitching marks as around the edge but this is a uh, one way of making a drum head, there's a variety of ways of making a drum head underneath the drum head we have the business part of the drum itself the electronic drum has a trigger mounted underneath a cone so the piezo trigger is mounted underneath this cone to the surface here this surface is an electrical conduit cover plate. You can use any kind of flat metal. It doesn't have to be that, just something that's reasonably solid. Utilizing the holes it already had, I transferred those holes into the cake pan itself and mounted some rubber nut certs from the bottom side of the cake pan and that's what my bolt is run through from the cake pan and gives me a stud that I can adjust up and down by adjusting these bolts here. My triggers are connected to the TRS jack. Here's the TRS jack. Are connected via quick connectors so I can unplug them, take the tape off, unplug them if I need to. What we see underneath here as I remove the cake pan are the nut certs that are mounting the stud bolts through the bottom. So this is the only thing that's going to be seen from the bottom side providing that you mount your TRS jack through the side of the drum and in through the side of the cake pan. Some of the people that are doing this are mounting the TRS jack lower than the cake pan so that it would protrude into the drum shell below the cake pan down lower and then they will run the wires from the triggers out the bottom of the cake pan and connect to the jack that way I tried this concept here mounting a little higher looking for a real clean way to clean up the bottom of the cake pan my next approach is going to not even use these studs like this and trying to glue a platform for the studs to the inside of the cake pan using some industrial strength glue Directly below this trigger, centered right and mounted to the cake pan, on the cake pan is another piezo trigger. That's going to be my head, uh, my rim trigger, and this is the head trigger. So there's another one of these mounted down inside on the cake pan, inside down into here, directly underneath this, right to the cake pan, dead center. And that is going to be the rim trigger so that no matter where on the drum the rim is struck, it's always the same distance from that trigger and will trigger equally. And if you're fortunate enough to have a drum module that can detect positional sensing like the later model Rolands do, and this is very much the way the Roland pads are made, the new Roland pads with their drop-in baskets, same kind of concept. Their trigger is centrally mounted, their rim trigger is centrally mounted so that they're equidistant. You do need to isolate your main head trigger in some fashion from being hard mounted to the same place that your rim trigger is mounted. So that's what the rubber is doing. Maybe some foam rubber tape would work. But some way of slightly isolating this trigger from this shell, which is effectively your edge or your rim. So there's the inside look of it. We've got the jack mounted through. I've got some heat shrink covering it up, some wire connecting both the head and the rim triggers, the other set of wires here. Head and rim triggers are going out that way. I had to do some clearancing in this particular case to clear the mount. This used a small tubular mount and the bolts holding that on did hit the cake pan a little bit. So I cleared those out just by drilling some holes and everything fits nicely in there. 
So then to put it all back together and utilize it and actually play, this gets dropped in, the head goes back on, the rim goes back on, and you plug it in.